Dr. Mori, Uncivilized Vitality, and this would be a video about uh, knives and my uh, kind of take on uh, knives and, and uh, cutting and cutting tools that you could use uh, while you're out in the woods or just daily carry. I typically throughout the day have um, at least two knives on me, uh, minimum, usually three. And then when I go out in the woods, I take, I'll add um, an ax and a saw and then my shovel and all my tools are complete. I don't really switch out my uh, daily carries. But over the years, I've tried several different knives and I've come down uh, through an evolution over the last uh, 40 some years of carrying a knife every day to uh, certain conclusions. One, um, for bushcraft stuff, I, I never take folders in the woods. Uh, I used to, and sometimes I still, in my, my shirt pocket, I'll keep a little bright orange Spyderco Dragonfly, just because it's good to open up and to use for little things like opening uh, ration packages, or uh, I call it a string and cheese knife. Something I'm just gonna have at hand, just open up, cut some string, cut some paracord, or uh, slice off my cheese when I'm eating dinner. Uh, but um, don't normally use folders for anything out in the woods, ex with the possible exception of uh, a multi-tool, which is a certain type of knife um, or cutting instrument. So it has a blade on it and it does fold. And I use this for my string and cheese and small cutting. But my multi-tool, this is my Leatherman Signal. It also has other things that are uh, just as handy as a knife that you wouldn't want to carry in separate packages like the saw blade and the pliers for grabbing uh, maybe hot pots. It's got this little hammer striker. I'm sure we've got a video on the Leatherman, the Leatherman Signal. Right? So I love that. That's what I carry every day. I've got a multi-tool. It is a folding knife of sorts. And then I usually have that little dragonfly in my pocket for different things. So those are, that's my string and cheese knife. And then I always had a belt knife. And when I was younger, I had, you know, and everybody, I'm not going to knock anyone that likes the, the bigger belt knives. But as I got older, I just got tired of carrying them and trying to swing them out of the way when I sit down like a, you know, small sword. Uh, for instance, this is one by... Habilis Bush Tools. <laughs> this is their, um, what is this name of this? I've had it for so long. It's like their one tool option. This thing's a beast. Uh, I mean, I could carry this instead of my ax. Um, it's got this little dog bone on there. Check out Habilis Bush Tools and um, check out all the, I can't remember the exact name of this model. If I do, I'll write it in the, the have it put in the description. The uh, Habilis Bush Tools. This thing is really big. It's um, your one tool option. You can chop with that. You can uh, slice and do small work. So, but I got tired of carrying it. And then one year for Christmas, my wife got me um, this Habilis Bush Tool. This is the, uh, the original Habilis Bush Tool. This one's been modified a little bit over the years because I've, you know, I've used it uh, roughly. So it's, I put a little jimping on it and I lost the, um, that little ferro notch that they use. But it's got a 90 degree spine. It's got this little pummel at the tip of the blades for uh, batoning. It's got a great blade shape, great sweep on the belly. And it kind of looks like almost a stone age, um, like a stone knife. So I, I really like this. This one's actually named uh, Uxor, uh, which is wife, because my wife got it for me for Christmas. And I carried that one for a, a, a lot. <laughs> all right, don't distract me, <laughs> wife. Uh, so I carried that one a lot, but then it's, it's all, it's, it's really big. It's cumbersome to keep moving around on my belt and gear. And I didn't really need that kind of cutting capacity because I would always carry a, a hatchet or a tomahawk with me. Uh, way, way long ago, I would carry around, like when I was a teenager, I got one of these cold steel uh, Bushman knives. And uh, I'll do another video, I'll add this one in because I really liked it. As soon as I'd get to the woods, I would get a piece of dead sapling or stick and use that hollow handle and make a spear. Um, and I'll talk about spears in another video. But again, too big. I was still on that, that trend when Uncivilized Vitality produced some, had produced some custom made uh, belt knives with this um, sash style uh, sheath where the, your, your, your uh, morgami or sash would come around, go through that and hold that knife tight to your body, right? And then, um, not as big, but still pretty chunky. Had a wide blade, so we could use that for things that would make people shudder, uh, like digging in the dirt. Um, just kind of an all-purpose beater of a knife. And then we even had some fancy ones made with matching leather uh, sheaths and uh, handles. Uh, we discontinued these. I think these are the last two or three we have. Um, I guess I don't know if anyone's interested, but we don't use knives that big. 
I kept scaling down. I moved down to, uh, this is an SE4, uh, I believe, with the, um, the rounded micarta broomstick style handles. I really like this. Uh, also, you're going to see I had a lot of the sheaths, uh, aftermarket sheaths, reproduced by Doug Wilson at Yellowhawk Custom Kydex. You're going to see a lot of those because of that, that retention. You cannot lose a knife out of one of Doug's sheaths. All right, so I had my SE re-sheath. I had to make a, a sheath for Uxor here with the tech lock so I could carry it at a canted angle. I have um, the little belt loop where you can have it as a dangler or a dropped option. That kind of keeps the big knife out of the way, All right? And then I went um, a little smaller, more utilitarian. So I, I went down even smaller. This is a JRE uh, leather sheath and I would carry that sash style cross draw. This is another Habilis bush tool. This one is the, the Wanderer. So it's a smaller version of Uxor. So I'm, I'm cutting that down, right? Getting a little smaller, <clears throat> excuse me. A little pointier, still got a good, a good sweep, right? Got a sharper, a sharper knife point. Got that little finger choil there. Fits really good in the hand. Uh, really like this knife. Carried this knife as my main belt or bush knife for a couple uh, two, three years, and then I decided to go even smaller. And uh, it's an expensive knife, so I was worried about losing. So I thought I'll just start uh, going a little smaller. This one I really like. This is the uh, everybody will recognize this one. A little beat up. This is the uh, Mora Knives Bushcraft Black, Bushcraft Black, and it's got uh, full tang. It's got a 90 degree spine. It's got probably the best handle Mora makes. Uh, really grippy. And then I just throw some uh, paracord and a couple of ranger bands around the sheath. And I made so a ranger band to make a little dangler option. Another band up here. Did I say ranger band? Paracord. I run that over my belt and then just slip that up behind there, behind that, the sheath. And I got a little dangler option for my bushcraft black. Uh, this is probably my go-to for a belt knife now, about this size. When we go on events, people that don't uh, come with their own belt knives, we'll hand out we got a few dozen of these more knives in the bright orange, the blaze orange. This is just the, uh, the companion. Got a great handle. And the best thing about more knives, especially for beginners, is it's about a $10 knife. So if they break it or lose it, no big deal. <clears throat> Staying about in that size range, I started to work down and I moved over to, I'm going to clean that one up a little bit, my uh, LT Wright uh, Nesmuk. I really like the Nesmuk shape and the size, and it makes a great handy belt knife cutting tool. And it's not so big that it's getting in the way, like the, where I started with like a Habilis bush tool or something bigger, one of those big old Rambo knives. Um, like I saw First Blood, you know, when I was a little kid and I wanted that great big knife, the one knife, one tool option, survival knife. Turns out it's not, <laughs> it's not that realistic. Uh, then I had, again, Doug Wilson, Yellowhawk Custom Kydex, hooked me up with a great sheath. Uh, LT Wright, this comes from uh, LT Wright with one of these JRE style uh, dangler sheaths and it fit in there really well. And I like that, but I also like the option for the winter uh, Northern Michigan here not having leather. So I like Kydex. And he even put a little ferro rod holder on the front of that. It's got that, that I, I have complete confidence that that's gonna stay in there. I'll never lose a knife. So this is now, uh, or has been, my main belt knife for a long time. But you know, again, it's a little heavy. <clears throat> I tried some other LT Wright. This was, uh, I forget what that's called, the JR6 or 7. I really was drawn to that uh, blade shape, but it's, it's a little too, it didn't really work for me for uh, bushcrafting, but I will use that as a daily car carrier sometimes. This was a collaboration with a channel called Prepared Mind 101. And he worked with uh, LT Wright, or actually Bark River, I think. This was from Bark River uh, Knives originally. I think he works with LT Wright on some of his others. Really cool, uh, really cool blade design. I like this. I carried that for a while. I need to get Doug to hook me up with some Kydex for this one because this sheath is just not, not doing it for me. So then I started to move down into smaller knives because here's a replica. I started to do a little more research and I'm like, well, how much of that knife do I actually use? Even a Mora knife is overkill. <clears throat> and I saw that, uh, let's see, the Iceman, this is a replica of the knife they found on his body. It was just in a little uh, neck sheath. He just carried it. 
And uh, this is, I want to say this is by Tops, Tops Knives. I'll have to look it up. But they they made a little replica. Even the, the blade is hammered to look like a flaked piece of stone or obsidian. And it's bound with the, the little wire wooden handles. That little Utsi, the Iceman knife. And I figured if this was good enough for a Paleolithic hunter 10, 20,000 years ago, this little neck knife, because he also had an axe with him, right? And I'm always carrying my tomahawk or axe, so I started thinking, you know what, besides convenience, I only need to cut a few things like string or cheese. So I started looking for smaller knives that would fit the bill. I still carry my Leatherman Signal, but that's a folding knife and I don't want to rely on it. So I also have to carry a straight bladed knife. So this one is a little too small and it's a cute replica. So I started looking around for other knives of similar dimension. I found a little LT right. I think this is their, I'm not sure which one this is. Uh, this little LT right knife, it's great. I put this, this little leather sheath. I carry this little um, dangling strap around my neck with that little toggle cord. And it's easy enough to fashion a dangler option with that by pushing a loop through my a loop of the paracord through the, the belt loop and then running that around that toggle cord. And now I've made a little Utsi the Iceman knife and I've got that with me. I can use that for anything I need and it's always right there. Problem with um, neck knives is sometimes they, they swing and dangle a little bit. But I like that size and then I found out it was just a little too small for bushcrafty tasks. So sometimes I would want to get uh, some batoning done or I would pry a little bit. So it's a little too small. And then I have other knives I carry um, on the daily, like this is a little clinch pick. This is a, a Pical style knife. This is mainly for other things besides uh, bushcraft. So that was out. I looked back to Mora knife, uh, kind of, they're kind of cheap. This is the Mora Eldris, lots of videos about that. Really like the handle and that little knife, uh, little blade, and it's got the double, the dual grinds on it. It's a real thin, it's really slicey, great string and cheese knife. Not a fan of the carry system. Supposed to be able to dangle this uh, as a neck knife, but this is not an L. This is not a Doug Wilson sheath, so I would not trust an inverted carry from that. That's just me. And then um, I'll strap that to my pack, and I put blaze orange around it because black is not good for bushcrafting all the time. But uh, it's a good knife. It's great to throw in your backpack or your pocket. Uh, Uncivilized Vitality has another knife. Uh, now we've started to work on this one. You've probably seen our other videos on this. This is the ADC knife, the All Day Carry. And uh, it's kind of a conglomeration of a lot of things. It's got a good reverse grip um, set to the handle. So it fits right in the hand there. And it's good for piercing and poking through things or uh, things that are threatening you. The sheath uh, just comes with it, not the best. You're gonna wanna send this off to Doug Wilson and get a good sheath made for it. Uh, but it's a pretty good knife. You can come, you can order this with or without the G10 scales or just do a paracord handle wrap. This is from, this is made by Lenny over at the Bearded Bladesmith and we'll put his link in the description if you want an Uncivilized Vitality uh, ADC knife. And you can see, Kind of just in the Uncivilized Vitality knives, my thought process as we went, I went from a giant uh, all-purpose belt knife, which was kind of a pain, and I realized that I didn't need that much blade, so we went down to just the smaller ADC knife, because this is, for me, the ideal size of belt knives, getting smaller and smaller. Uh, another LT right. This is the Great Plainsman. Uh, great knife. Comes in a, a um, JRE custom leather and you, pouch style sheath, and you can get a little dangler option for that. You could also run this as a neck knife hanging from your toggle cord. Great knife. Uh, this has been my go-to uh, a lot. I like the, the spine on that. It's got a very, like all LT right knives, got that 90 degree spine. It can, it can scrape, um, scrape bark off the ferro rods really well. Great knife. Great plane. So this is about the size I like. Uh, sometimes I carry uh, in this size range the uh, White River. I think there's their logo. I don't know if you can see that or not. White River. This is their Backpacker Pro. Uh, this is a great knife. Just the right size. Got the blaze orange scales for out in the woods in case you set it down or drop it. Can't lose it. Uh, really comfortable. Got that deep finger choil. Got nice jimping. 
just enough blade to get stuff done, but not too much to carry. Uh, Backpacker Pro. Also, Doug Wilson sheath. And then I've got this hooked up to run on the outside of my, um, my chest rigs. The only thing that I would say, and it's not negative, the only um, thing I wish I had is a sharper spine on the Backpacker Pro. But it's not a bushcrafting knife. They have the uh, FC 3.5 and the FC 5, their Firecraft, which does have a sharp spine, just a little too big uh, for my purposes. LT right got that great spine on there. So that'd be the only thing I would say I wish was a little different about the Backpacker Pro. But I always have the saw blade on my on my Leatherman. The back of that saw blade on your multi-tool, that's the best fire scraper, fire striker you're ever going to find. Um, oh, also, I had Doug Wilson make a sheath for my Great Plainsman for an LT right. So this is also a great option. So now we're getting down to the size where they're, they're easy and convenient to carry and there's enough blade to get all the work done, especially when you combine that with a multi-tool and maybe a third emergency or backup knife. And then that would be something like that Eldris or here's a little rig I've got set up with some Tinder strapped to the back of it. It's got this little pouch, blaze orange. This is my little SE Candiru. The Candiru. And it's even got a little picture of a Candiru on there. I don't know if you can actually see that. Candiru evidently is one of those South American fish with the spines that swim when you you pee in the river. They they follow the uh, urea and they swim right up your urethra and you can't get them out because of the little spikes, which is super goddamn horrific. But they made a little knife named after that called the Candiru. Great knife. Uh, I have another sheath for that at home, a Kydex, but I like to carry it in this little setup. I throw a little ranger band on there to keep that flap shut. I've got on the back a little package of tinder and a tiny little fire steel uh, and ceramic scraper wrapped up in that package. It's got a quick release cord and I just drop that around my neck on uh, some of my uh, campaigns, sometimes like when we're canoeing or whatever, which actually leads me to uh, SE. This would be my third contingency knife, like my, my backup. So I have my tomahawk. My all-time favorite, fits all the bill, uh, everything I need is the uh, SE Izula. Right? SE Izula. Uh, this one is old. I've taken the the coating off that, it's got a little patina on it because it's super, super old. It's got these little micarta scales bolted on there. The SE Azula, there's hundreds of videos about the Azula in comparison to some of these other knives. Uh, a lot of times it, you're going to find comparisons lately to the, the Backpacker Pro from White River and the, uh, the Guardian 3 from Bradford. I had the Guardian 3 for a while. I, I didn't like it. Didn't like the way it felt in my hand. Great knife, just not for me. I am 100% SE Azula. Matter of fact, that's my older Azula, but my daily carry now, and for quite a while, has been another uh, SE Azula. This one's blacked out with G10 scales, and it goes all the way up. This is the Azula 1. It's got a um, handle that makes it look like the Azula 2, but it is the same one. It's just the G10 scales cover that um, hole at the end of the Azula, and you can put a paracord wrap on this if you want to. The, uh, the one thing I would suggest, and I still need to do, to get my Azula over to Doug to get a Doug Wilson Yellowhawk custom Kydex sheath for my Azula. When I carry this one, this one's blacked out. This is my daily carry. I drop that down in my pocket. I've got a little uh, toggle cord with a little alligator clip on the end. I'll grab the inside of my uh, pocket material, drop that in so I can pull it out, dummy cord it. Sometimes if I want to run that around my neck, I just drop it on my, uh, my neck cord and then I've got that there, and then of course I can, I can tighten this thing up a little bit more so it's not running so low. Right. And then when I get where I'm going, I need to put that back in my pocket. I'm not out in the woods, so I can throw it in my pocket. Um, you've probably seen some other videos where I can also run this with our Uncivilized Vitality, that infinity cord setup, where I run that around and hang it tight to my chest so it doesn't swing. But SD Azula. It's just enough blade to get everything done you need in the outdoors uh, and your daily carry, string and cheese. I can baton. I can do a lot of bushcrafty stuff with this. I don't need, I mean, other, uh, you know, opinions vary, but I don't need a gigantic honking knife uh, when this will get everything done. And this combine that with, a, with an ax and it takes a 
two tools to do the job of maybe this chopper, but this is not great at cutting. It's not great at chopping. It's not as good as an ax at chopping. It's not as good as this at smaller tasks. But sometimes people like that giant uh, one way, one, one wife, one tool, <laughs> one wife option, one tool option. Wasn't for me. I just got, I'm lazy. I got tired of carrying it. So I always go with the Azula. This is my best recommendation, except for the obvious um, uncivilized vitality ADC knife, because every one of these we sell, we get the uh, proceeds go to the Uncivilized Living Foundation charity. So obviously I'm plugging this one, but this is the one that uh, I really, really like. SE Azula. It's got everything you need. I wish the spine was a little sharper, but that's easy enough to do like I did with my original SE. I just took a file and ground, ground that off a little bit to get that sharp ferro rod scraping spine. Okay. The sheath is interesting. It's uh, got a lot of carry options. It's not standard, but I am going to send off for a Yellow Hawk custom Kydex sheath because uh, I love everything Doug does with the sheaths and you can see that from my pile of knives. So those are my recommendations and, and a, an example of a bunch of different knives. You can kind of see how I went from larger belt knife and uh, my, my thinking and use of the knives, the, the years and years and years that have piled up. I've been spending more and more time out uh, outdoors. Used to run one or two events in the early 90s with people. We always had the big landmark, like the winter camp and the summer camp and then a few weekends. But now with Uncivilized Vitality, I'm camping. Uh, we're running a campaign at least once a month, sometimes twice a month, in different areas. So... Um, as I've carried more and more, I've just just streamlined my choices down to my Leatherman uh, folding, my Leatherman multi-tool. So I've got a folding knife, string and cheese. My main belt knife is the Azula size. And then I carry a tomahawk and a folding saw with me. Sometimes a third backup knife, uh, something that's bright orange that I won't lose. And uh, there you go. So you can go back. I went through those kind of quick. You can just pause the video and see them. And then any, any of the names I didn't mention, just write that in the comments and Rendell will send you back the information you need. And you can look up the specs on uh, the various websites. And uh, wife's giving me the wrap it up signal. So there you go. <laughs> Leave some comments below. Any questions about the knives or why I recommend that size now. And uh, like, share, and subscribe.